Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about Virgo relationships. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. Anyway, people, first off is, as far as uh, Virgo uh, relationships go, well, the first house uh, in astrology uh, generally will reflect the uh, paternal grandmother and maternal uh, grandfather. And one or more, one or uh, both of these people may have a Virgo, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply embody Virgo-like characteristics. The people may be rather persnickety, uh, fastidious. They could be very meticulous in the way they dress, somewhat judgmental and critical, but very uh, service-oriented and wanting to be very helpful, uh, but generally not going to be in an unwanted or uh, officious manner. Now. It could be true as well that uh, one or both people may be in a Virgo-like uh, profession, uh, such as something um, working as a professional organizer, something with extrapolation uh, of data, projecting data, um, statistical uh, work, um, something of an analytical nature, dealing with analytics, uh, data entry. Uh, something that could be health related, such as working as some kind of a physician or a doctor. Uh, also, too, as far as the relationship goes uh, with these people, it could be one where it's somewhat uh, critical. You might have nearly a compulsive complaining uh, going on uh, as well. But a lot of times it could be very uh, done in a very constructive, a constructive manner, back and forth, and one which is uh, where you have a lot of service provided uh, for one another. So uh, anyway, well, the next thing up is as far as Virgo relationships go. Well, the third house in astrology represents siblings and cousins, and Scorpio often falls on the third house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Virgo. So uh, one or more of these people can be a Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply embody uh, Scorpio-like characteristics. Uh, one or more of these people can be rather willful, uh, secretive, uh, resourceful, very resilient, ability, a strong ability to decipher the motives of others, see through subterfuge and, and superficiality. Uh, it could be also uh, people that are uh, have very strong willpower, a strong will, but yet very powerful, uh, intense, and sometimes these relationships can be destructive and can have uh, upheavals as well. Uh, the, you know, uh, this is something where, uh, looking at this, uh, one or more of these people, um, siblings and cousins, can uh, be in a Scorpio-like profession, uh, such as working in astrology, the occult supernatural, working as a mortician, recycling, a sex therapist, uh, something, uh, magic, alchemy, forensics, uh, working as a psychologist or uh, psychiatrist. Now, as far as the connection and relationship goes uh, with these people, it can be one that could be very powerful and tense. There could be some power struggles uh, and upheavals uh, connected with these relationships. Uh, it could be one that could be very uh, transforming and one uh, more more per people can have a very powerful and maybe even transforming effect on uh, the other. So anyway, well, the next thing up is as far as um, relationships go, uh, Virgo relationships, the fourth house in astrology uh, represents the less dominant parent, which is often uh, the mother, and Sagittarius often falls on the fourth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Virgo. So uh, this person may have a, a Sagittarius sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Sagittarius-like characteristics. It could be someone that's very buoyant, jocular, jovial, likes to joke around, uh, philosophical, be very expansive. Uh, you may see this person as the incorrigible optimist, actually someone that's very exuberant, enthusiastic, and likes to see the glass half full, uh, so to speak. Um, someone that has a very uh, positive outlook and it often can rub off uh, on others and it could be someone too very adventurous and travel minded so and, and, and being in someone that you may see is like that perpetual learner 
And uh, another thing uh, too, as far, it could also be someone that may be in a Sagittarius-like profession. It could be somebody in philosophy, religion, theology, uh, in publishing, someone that works as an interpreter or a translator, a person that might be in a travel field, uh, such as a, a, a pilot or working as a travel agent or a cruise director. Uh, even someone that might be in a higher education, such as working as like a college professor. And uh, also, too, as far as the relationship goes uh, with this person, it can be one where you approach it with a lot of enthusiasm and exuberance and where you really are uh, in very positive uh, regarding uh, one another and try to see the positive uh, in each other and really... Uh, one, two, where you might be involved in a lot of long distance traveling uh, with this person, perhaps uh, as well. But it's one where it's where it often can be very fortuitous, considering you're talking about Sagittarius and connected uh, with luck, of course. So anyway, well, the next thing up is, well, uh, Virgo and relationships, the uh, fifth house in astrology represents uh, children and that uh, love and romantic partner now or partners. And uh, Capricorn often falls on the fifth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Virgo. So uh, this person uh, or people uh, could have a uh, Capricorn sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Capricorn-like characteristics. It might be someone that might be at least seen as rather callous, cold, undemonstrative, somewhat sad, melancholy, uh, depressing, despond, but could also be very serious, orthodox, uh, conventional, uh, one that might really don't seem to go outside the box, too often very cautious, and somebody that is very strongly about planning and very premeditative. Now, also, too, uh, one or more of these people may be involved in a uh, Capricorn-like profession, such as working in dentistry or some kind of business administration, uh, working as um, some other uh, business operations uh, manager, working as a landlord, uh, some position of authority, working in the government or in, in, or in politics, perhaps, or even working as just like a mundane or general uh, labor or worker. Now, as far as the relationship goes with one or more of these people, remember Capricorn is the sign connected with restriction and limitation. So you might feel there's some kind of limitation or restriction associated with this. So there might be something limiting about this uh, connection with one or more of these people represented by the fifth house now. And it could also be one you might feel somewhat depressing, but also where it's very consistent and you pretty much know what you're getting, some a, a connection that's very orthodox, very uh, conventional, and very and really, as I stated before, very very consistent and maybe regular. So anyway, um, and one which is with a lot of uh, really approach uh, with a lot of maturity. So anyway, next thing up is uh, for uh, Virgo and relationships go. Well, the sixth house in astrology. Uh, represents the less dominant parents uh siblings your aunts and uncles uh and aquarius often falls on the sixth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for virgo so this could be uh, uh one or one or more of these people can be an aquarius sun moon or ascendant or simply embody aquarius like characteristics it could be uh, one or more of these people may be somewhat eccentric, eclectic, unorthodox, unconventional, innovative, ingenious, uh, non-conforming, maybe even a little bit rebellious or have the maverick in them, so to speak. Uh, people that might be very selfless and, uh, and, and show humanitarian qualities as well. Um, also, too, it could be uh, one or more of these people may be involved in Aquarius-like professions, such as inventing, innovation, uh, computers, electronics, an esoteric subject, which of course can include astrology, something that a uh, profession might be somewhat unusual or uh, unique. Uh, it could be uh, a person, too, that may be uh, doing something, I mean, working as an electrician, so something or aerospace or astronomy now also too uh as far as the connection relationship goes uh with these people well 
it could be one where you might see uh, one or both the more or I should say one or more of these people as more of a friend than an actual relative where you show a lot of am amicability and very strong friendliness toward each other and a lot of selflessness and humanitarian qualities but you might uh, see these people maybe as a somewhat cool aloof and detached as well well next thing up is uh, as far as uh, Virgo relationships go uh, the seventh house in astrology represents the significant other slash marriage partner and uh, also uh, represents the uh, maternal uh, of, often the maternal grandmother and paternal uh, grandfather and Pisces of course falls on will fall on the seventh house cusp in a solar or natal chart for uh, Virgo so uh, one or more of these people uh, could be a uh, Pisces Sun Moon or Ascendant or simply embody Pisces like characteristics they could be people that are very uh, idealistic submissive passive uh, non-confrontational people that like their isolation and solitude and seclusion uh, could be people that are somewhat malleable very adaptable very adept at adapting to adverse circumstances uh, people that could be very uh, strongly emotional but yet very uh, intuitive uh, perhaps as well and very compassionate and, and very imaginative even now uh, another thing uh, too is uh, as far as um, the, this goes you can one or more of these people may be in a Pisces like profession uh, such as working in the metaphysical which of course includes astrology uh, spirituality uh, could be oceanography chemistry photography uh, working um, perhaps uh, something with boating even working as a medium or a uh, psychic so something or even a profession connected with the feet perhaps now as far as the connection and relationship goes uh, with with uh, one or more of these people it could be one where I mean wherever Pisces falls in a chart I see is where one may uh, overlook transgressions and uh, this could be where you might overlook the transgressions strongly in an aunt or uncle or uh, maybe or even a significant other or marriage partner and one which you approach with a lot of idealism and unfortunately there might be some deception and duplicity connected with it and you might see these people as somewhat unclear or somewhat uh, nebulous as well so uh, anyway uh, well the next thing up is um, as far as astrology and relationships go well uh, the eighth house in astrology uh, represents uh, intimate re and sexual relationships and uh, one or more of these people uh, represented may actually be an Aries I mean Aries often falls on the eighth house cusp in the solar natal chart for Virgo uh, so um, one of these people may be an Aries Sun Moon or Ascendant or simply embody Aries like characteristics it could be P one or more of these people may be uh, outspoken very forthright straightforward direct very courageous uh, even fearless have a lot of uh, valor fortitude and courage but can be very impulsive and impetuous and impatient uh, as well people that really can be uh, angered quickly but but generally not vindictive or grudge holding uh, people that could be quick tempered and uh, but uh, but being Aries of course you know perhaps people with a very uh, exorbitant and uh, good sexual appetite as well so anyway uh, and one or more of these people may be in Aries uh, in an Aries like profession such as welding or anything with fire such as an arson investigation anything with arson um, or say you just are uh, working as a firefighter um, anything connected with leadership uh, the military working as a soldier uh, perhaps working as a gunsmith anything associated with firearms and as far as the connection and relationship goes uh, with these people it could be one where you express a lot of uh, you could say straightforwardness of uh, being a lot of you know really being very direct a lot of uh, uh, a lot of outspokenness and and one where it could be somewhat confrontational contentious but also one where you may be able to really readily stand up uh, for one another 
uh, in a pinch. So in in one in one where you're ready to go to combat for or for met for one or more of these people and perhaps vice versa as well. So anyway, well the next thing up is well as far as Virgo relationships go, the ninth house in astrology represents in-laws and grandchildren. And Taurus will often fall on the ninth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for uh, Virgo. So one or more of these people may be a Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply embody Taurus-like characteristics. It could be uh, one or more of these people may be uh, somewhat stubborn, obstinate, unyielding, have strong powers of perseverance and persistent, may have good, very uh, blatant energy. Uh, very relaxed, uh, peaceful, uh, quiet, uh, people that are very loyal and steadfast. Uh, and also, too, uh, one or more of these people may be in a Taurus-like profession, such as working as a cashier, banking, uh, doing uh, working as a stockbroker, working in finance, uh, cultivation, uh, financial advisor, uh, working in uh, construction, uh, or architecture. So um, anyway, uh, as far as the relationship goes and the connection uh, with in-laws and grandchildren, well, uh, this could be one where you express a lot of, where it's really a very persistent one, one where you express a lot of patience. Uh, it could be one too where you show a lot of loyalty to each other uh, and, and really both of you and, and, the, uh, and the people connected with the ninth house could be very steadfast and, uh, and show steadfastness toward uh, one another. And, uh, and But at the same time, it can be one where it's very, where really, uh, where, I mean, Taurus is connected with obstinacy and stubbornness, of course, so you generally get the idea, I think, that uh, you that, that those qualities can be expressed and when you guys you know make up your mind about something it might be kind of a tug of war because it, you know you well, you know one or more of these people might be holding on to their viewpoints very strongly and one where neither party really may want to give in so anyway well the next thing up is well um, as far as Virgo relationships go uh, the 10th house in astrology represents the dominant parent, which is often uh, the father. And Gemini uh, often will fall on the 10th house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Virgo. So this person may have a, a Gemini sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Gemini-like uh, characteristics. It could be someone that's very uh, whimsical, a very light, very vivacious uh, a person that might really... Um, be whimsical, have, require a lot of mental stimulation, dexterous, being able to do good, a lot of things uh, with the hands, someone that's very loquacious and can talk about a lot of um, a lot of different subjects, very multifaceted, and someone that's very versatile uh, as well. And uh, the thing about this too is this could also, I mean, as far as this goes, uh, this could be a, a person that might be in a Gemini-like uh, profession as well, such as doing something with communication, such as working as a journalist, a writer, broadcaster, um, maybe even a reporter. Uh, I could also data communication, satellite communication, also something where the hands are strongly required, where dexterity is prominent, such as working as an auto or refrigeration mechanic. And as far as the connection and relationship goes, uh, with this person it can be one where you have, of course, a lot of stim, um, you know, mental stimulation, a lot of uh, communication, talking about a variety of subjects. One that really where you disdain monotony, and one that could be really hardly ever uh, boring, where you express a lot of variety and doing a lot of uh, different things, but well, but really where you don't maybe show a lot of persistence in one particular action, because Gemini energy, of course, loves to have. Uh, variety. Uh, so anyway, uh, well, the next uh, thing up as uh, far as Virgo relationships go is the 11th house. And the 11th house in astrology represents friends and uh, stepchildren. And the zodiac sign Cancer often falls on the 11th house cusp in a solar or natal chart for uh, Virgo. So one or more of these people may have a uh, 
Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply embody Cancerian-like characteristics. It could be people that are rather temper temperamental, moody, uh, very fickle, uh, emotional, sensitive to the environment. Uh, it could be people that are uh, that really fear uh, ridicule and criticism and derisive remarks. Uh, ones that are very clingy and nurturing, but yet very sympathetic and show a lot of compassion. Uh, as well and very and, and really very protective now another thing uh, is uh, as far as this goes this could be uh, some one or more of these people too may be in a cancerian like uh, profession such as something uh, can, such as working as a historian home security home remodeling renovation repair uh, cultivation roofing uh, siding uh, working uh, as a cook, a culinary field, perhaps doing uh, something um, such as maybe cultivation could be another uh, possibility. Uh, something where, I mean, just anything that could be a uh, Cancerian, like working in a restaurant or fast food place. And um, as far as the uh, relationship and connection goes uh, with one or more of these people, it can be one where you're very protective uh, of each other and one where you show, I mean, a lot of strong emotions and uh, express the emotions very strongly, very, very demonstratively. And also, too, where you kind of are nostalgic and reminisce a lot about maybe the past, the good and the bad. And one where maybe you nurture uh, one another very strongly and show a lot of sympathy uh, toward each other uh, as well, but at the same time, where but where you might be very uh, in, in these people may be very sensitive uh, to criticism and ridicule, perhaps from you, and maybe vice versa as well. Last but not least, uh, the twelfth house in astrology uh, represents the dominant parents, uh, siblings. So these are aunts and and uncles. Now. Leo often falls on the 12th house cusp in a solar or natal chart for a Virgo. So uh, one or more of these people uh, may have a Leo sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Leo-like characteristics. Uh, it could be people that are rather arrogant, bombastic, flamboyant, showy, uh, ones that have very good presence, uh, people that want to be the center of attention, that want others to revolve around them, so to speak. Uh, people, too, that could be very generous, magnanimous, but really uh, extravagant as well. Maybe have a difficult time uh, really working within their budget, uh, so to speak. And it could also be uh, one or more of these people may also be in a uh, Leo-like um, uh, profession, such as game development or design, designing board games or video games or what have you. Uh, working in the entertainment field, so working as an actor, actress, uh, working in the in the theater, uh, working in movies, doing uh, something with movie production, even uh, working in uh, something connected with an with amusement, such as an amusement park, doing something of a creative nature, or perhaps in some field working uh, with children. So anyway. Um, but the thing about uh, this, as far as the uh, relationship and connection goes with uh, one or more of these people, it could be one where you express a lot of fortitude and courage uh, toward each other, one where you kind of boast each other up and, and really uh, emphasize and accentuate the positive with one another, and one where you take a lot of pride in and show a lot of generosity, whether it's through money or through your time. Uh, as well, and, and you might want to be spending uh, extravagant amounts on these people and perhaps vice versa uh, as well. Um, so anyway, um, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for Virgo relationships. Uh, stay tuned next time where I'll be talking about Libra relationships. Uh, what I want to get with you on is, uh, sorry people, in the previous video, uh, I stated I was going to do uh, the Chiron and Aries uh, transit video, uh, but I'm not. I don't think I'm going to do it until the completion of the relationship uh, relationships uh, videos. So anyway, two things I want to get with you on before I head out. 
Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.